Yo, what is up guys, and welcome back to McAdies Entertainment. I'm your host as always, Adam McGahey. I just wanted to say thank you all again for helping send this channel to the moon. We recently broke 4,900 subscribers, and it is all thanks to your constant comments and support. You all are the true heroes. In our last video, we continued the Marvel Zombies character breakdown with the full gory story of Zombie Wolverine. I will have that linked in the title card and in the description below. In today's video, we'll be covering the bloody tale of the genius, billionaire, undead philanthropist himself, and that would be none other than Zombie Iron Man. The What If Show has not been kind to of poor Tony Stark as he died in nearly every episode that he was in and is basically Marvel's Kenny from South Park at this point. The Marvel Zombie comics are also pretty mean to Mr. Stark, but his story is quite the bloody good time. His tale spans multiple dimensions, so grab your donuts, sit back, relax, and enjoy the full gory story of Zombie Iron Man. Who is he? Zombie Iron Man is one of the countless superheroes infected by a virus that turned him into a violent flesh-eating monster. He made his first appearance in the pages of Ultimate Fantastic Four number 23 back in 2005. Like the others, he comes from Earth 2149. Prior to his zombification, this world's Tony was very similar to his main universe counterpart from Earth 616. This soon changed when Ash Williams, yes the same groovy guy from the Evil Dead movies, was knocked into this dimension by a zombified version of the Sentry, who is basically Marvel's Superman. Ash knew that this infection was coming to the Marvel Universe, so he did the best thing that came to his mind, which was blast down the front door to the Avengers Mansion to get the hero's attention. I mean, he's not wrong. You want to get the Avengers to show up? That's, uh, definitely one way to do it. Iron Man and the others show up, rather miffed that some guy just blew up their intercom system. Ash then told his story to warn the heroes of the coming danger. However, after the not so great first impression our Boomstick Boy left on them, the Avengers simply chalked Ash up to being just another crazy New York resident. Colonel America had Spider-Man web poor Ash up and take him to the authorities while him and the others went to answer a distress call in the middle of Manhattan. Once the Avengers arrived, the heroes were quick to realize that the weird dude with the shotgun who blew up their intercom was actually telling the truth this whole time. Here in the middle of the city was Zombie Sentry, who began tearing through the supers, infecting dozens of them in the process. See guys, when, when Bruce Campbell shows up to your house and starts warning you about something bad that's gonna happen, you just listen. Bruce knows the deal. The infected heroes then began pillaging through the city streets, devouring every terrified citizen they could find. Tony Stark had actually stayed behind on this mission, and thus was not part of the initially infected group. Once the pandemic began to spread throughout the city, Tony and the still human heroes were recruited by Nick Fury aboard the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier so they could put an end to things. The scientific minds of Tony and Reed Richards were tasked with finding a cure and a means of escape. Reed was able to supply Tony with the tools he needed so he could construct a machine that would transport the survivors to an alternate dimension where the plague did not exist. He worked tirelessly on the device, all while probably bumping some ACDC to keep himself sane in these crazy times. Once the machine was complete, he located a dimension similar to theirs where a pandemic had wiped out society but the plague had also died off, leaving room for this dimension survivors to move in and start fresh. Stark informed Fury that there was only enough power to transport everybody once, so they needed to be strategic and precise with how they handled things. However, this being a zombie story, of course the absolute worst possible scenario had to happen as Reed Richards had gone crazy during this time as his child was eaten by a zombie She-Hulk. As he researched the virus, he became obsessed with it and thought it was the next step in evolution. He then proceeded to infect his fellow Fantastic Four members with it, transforming them into undead supers who in turn infected him. The now frightful four burst into the room where Stark and Fury were, delighted to hear that they now had access to a multiverse with countless delicious people to eat. 
shocked at what happened to his former friends, Tony demanded to know what happened. Reed informed him that he was enlightened by the power of the plague and that Tony soon would too. Zombie Reed out here trying to get everyone to drink his cult zombie Kool-Aid. Tony bolted to grab the suitcase containing his armor, but it was too late as the Zombie 4 members bit into the billionaire, infecting him so his brilliant mind could assist them in this cannibal new world order that they were creating. Nick Fury would get away, sealing off the doors and locking himself in the room with the machine and a handful of heroes. As the Fantastic Four pounded away at the door, Fury knew that this was the end and ordered for Thor to destroy the device so only this dimension would be subject to these hellish hungry heroes. Thor agreed and brought the thunder down on the portal, completely decimating it. The Frightful Four would then make their way into the room, gobble Fury up, and then infect Thor and the other heroes. Reed then ordered his new zombie pals to take the pieces of the machine back to the Baxter building, where he planned to repair it and give he and the other zombies access to the multiverse. Hey, uh, Watcher? You up there, bro? I know you, uh, you don't normally interfere, but I think you're gonna have to make an exception in this case. Hello? Hello? A now fully zombified Iron Man and the gang would then discover that an uninfected Doctor Doom was harboring Latvarian refugees at his castle. He and his scientists had also constructed their own dimensional portal so they could lead these survivors to safety. Iron Man and the Hungry Avengers then stormed the castle so they could help themselves to these nice survivor sandwiches. Upon doing battle with a Deadite Legion summoned by our boy Ash Williams, the super zombies were too late as Doom got Ash and the others safely through the portal. Doom proceeded to destroy the device as soon as everyone got through, but that did not stop the likes of Zombie Reed and Tony, who took the parts from it to help rebuild theirs. Once the machine was all patched up, Zombie Reed then used it to communicate with a younger version of himself from the Ultimate Universe who also had a dimensional portal. He even used the hologram to make himself look all friendly and human-like with his son. Aw, oh, so cute. Definitely not a zombie. He then convinced Ultimate Reed to come to his dimension so they could work on projects together. Young Reed, thinking he was going to get to hang out and vibe with his older self, was sadly mistaken when he came to this dimension and saw a hellish landscape that was ravaged by the undead. My dude just wanted to study and chill, and instead got zombies who kill. Young Reed Richards, getting a nice heavy dose of PTSD at an early age. I feel you, dude. Ultimate Reed managed to escape the zombie Fantastic Four, where he was then saved by Magneto, who was protecting a small group of survivors in the subway tunnels of New York. The pair approached the tunnels and met up with the team. They managed to get a quick breather, but it was not too long before Zombie Wolverine sniffed the fresh meat out and led Zombie Tony and the boys to them, all ready to tear up these survivors like a fresh bag of Doritos. Magneto then showed how OP he was by using his magnetic powers to whack Zombie Iron Man and his fellow undead with one of the old subway trains, giving him and the survivors time to escape. So glad these comics show how awesome a boy Magneto is. He's... he's just a beast! With the aid of the other Ultimate Fantastic Four members, Magneto and the survivors arrived to the portal so they could escape to the Ultimate Dimension. The former villain, however, stayed behind and sacrificed himself so he could destroy the machine on the other side and seal things off so the zombies could not spread the virus to other worlds. Upon blowing the device up, Magneto was surrounded by a group of angry and hungry undead who swore vengeance on the man for closing the Universal Buffet. This set off a deadly chase between the Master of Magnetism and the Horde, which ultimately resulted in the poor guy getting his neck bit out, his leg ripped off, and his body torn apart and devoured by the Cannibal Avengers. Poor Magneto. At least my boy got in some good hits before he met his demise. My man is still one of the goats in comic history. Once the boys were done with their magnetic meal, they kicked back, wondering when second breakfast would arrive. Lo and behold, they then see that the dinner gods heard their prayers as none other than the Silver Surfer arrived to the planet to scan it to see if it would be suitable nourishment for his master Galactus. As he surfed around, 
The zombies plotted how they would catch him if he were to come back again. As Colonel America and the other undead regrouped, Zombie Tony, who had probably just recovered after his run-in with Magneto's train, arrived on the scene asking where the mutant was so he could get a taste of him as revenge. The boys, trying to hide the fact that they saved no leftovers for Tony, tried to make up a story that the mutant was blown up by a ruptured gas line during the fight, leaving nothing to eat. So, not only are these former heroes cannibalistic animals, they're also just straight up liars. You know, sounds like they'd make great lawyers. Tony, knowing that this was complete nonsense, called the gang out on it, and they finally came clean with the truth. He admits he would have done the same, and was just feeling a little hangry since he had not eaten in over a day. Poor zombie Tony. Someone get this guy a, a, a Snickers or something. Having picked the world nearly clean of life, Tony and Steve try to plan what they were going to do next. They are then interrupted by the Silver Surfer, who finished his global surfing trip to announce that his master Galactus would soon be arriving to devour the planet. Completely ignoring Chrome Mr. Clean, Iron Man and the gang leapt at the warrior, all ready to get a taste of his shiny flesh. Stark was one of the first to get close to the Surfer, only to be completely blown in half by his cosmic energy. This did not stop the tenacious Tony though, who despite not even having a full digestive tract anymore, still tried to take a bite out of the warrior, only to break several of his teeth on the surfer's near impenetrable skin. Uh, Tony, I think Pepper's gonna have to call you a dentist's appointment. Uh, probably a podiatrist too. What's that? You're good? Oh, I understand. Uh, have a good day. Upon noticing this strange half-man in a metal suit gnawing at his leg, the surfer picked Tony up and tossed him into the streets below. My boy has no time for zombie Tony Stark and his zombie shenanigans. Wolverine then tries his best Hugh Jackman impression and lunges at the chrome boy, only for his claws to scratch up against the guy's skin, causing his arm to completely bust up and fall apart. Poor Wolvie then pulls the remaining bone and skin out of his arm and runs into the better half of our zombie billionaire who asked Logan to throw him back into the battle so he could get another taste. Zombie Iron Man is the living definition of the Call of Duty zombies. Please bro, I have ray gun meme. Except, he really is kind of a ray gun, isn't he? <gasps> a zombie ray gun? Mom, I'm scared. Logan agrees and whips Iron Man back into the battle like a fastball. Despite his best attempts to get another bite, Tony soon falls back to the ground while the surfer continues to destroy several of the zombies with his energy blast. Decimating all those who stood in his way, it would seem our Platinum Warrior would survive and escape. That is until a zombie Hulk arrives on the scene and evens the playing field by grabbing the surfer and biting the dude's head right off. See, I still don't understand how this works. Both Wolverine and Iron Man tried attacking this dude and basically fell apart trying to do so, but then Hulk comes in it just bites the guy's head off. You know, maybe Galactus had to cut corners when making his heralds and had to make you know, like the neck area cheaper than the rest of the body. No one likes a cheapskate Galactus. I feel you though, bro. Times are hard. As waves of cosmic gore energy come pouring out of the surfer's throat, Zombie Giant Man grabs Iron Man and a handful of others and books it over to the scene so they could get a taste of the cosmic corpse. After Tony and the heroes finish eating, they realize that this meal was full of nutrients that allowed them to shoot cosmic blasts of their own out of their hands. They then decide to become gourmet chefs and use their powers to cook their fellow zombie compatriots and proceed to eat them, Tony and the gang giving a whole new meaning to having friends for dinner. Oh, I'll see myself out. Being able to shoot cool lasers was not the only power that these heroes now had in their zombie tool belts. Tony discovered that he now had the ability to fly again even without his boots and informed the others that they can do the same. Just before they could celebrate being the alpha male zombies, the boys were soon put in their place as they realized that the shiny surfboard guy was telling the truth and that Galactus had arrived to the planet announcing its destruction. Seeing that they had just won the giant fleshy jackpot, Tony and the heroes tried to attack Galactus but were quick to realize that they were basically level 25s going up against a level 100 boss. Zombie Giant Man then proposed that they retreat so they could formulate a plan to take this guy down and reap the meaty rewards. 
They then escape to Pym's lab, where he, Tony, and Bruce Banner work together to create a machine that could transform their powers into one unified beam. Stark and the group finish the device, aim it at Galactus and fire, causing a gigantic wave of energy to strike the big purple man, causing him to scream out in pain and come tumbling to the ground. Now too, Galactus knows what it feels like to get hit by Samus' final smash in Smash Bros. That thing is just deadly. Upon seeing that the big boy was down, some remaining zombie villains come sniveling out of their hiding holes, all ready to mooch up the hero's food that they had just worked for. Iron Man and the gang then assert their alpha status and let these villains know that this hunt was theirs. This then caused the groups to go to full-on zombie-on-zombie war with each other. The villains tried their best, but were no match for Iron Man and the Avengers with their newfound cosmic strength. Right after the battle, Galactus, while still mortally wounded, showed he was still alive and swore vengeance on these hellish creatures for hurting him. Seeing this as free fleshy real estate, Iron Man and his band of organ-eating men then leapt onto Galactus and tore the World Conqueror open, completely devouring the World Devourer. Upon eating the Titan, Iron Man and the gang's cosmic powers leveled up once again as they gained the ability to travel planet to planet, fully consuming it and its citizens, and all while in matching purple cosmic jumpsuits. I love a man in uniform. Tony and the Galactus band members would then eventually find their way to the Skrull homeworld, where they would blast, zap, and snack their way through the entire planet's population. Just imagine you're out there minding your business and this floating torso of Robert Downey Jr. just pops up out of nowhere, ready to eat your face off. Yeah, I'm good. No, I don't want to picture that. Robert Downey Jr., you can stay far away from me as possible, please. It was on this planet that Iron Man and the Hungry Boys would come across a dimensionally displaced Black Panther and Fantastic Four who they would do battle with. T'Challa and the Four would eventually escape, where Tony and the rest would chow down on the remaining Skrull inhabitants. The Hulk, still being the biggest and hungriest zombie of all, gave the group the idea to tap into the full power that they inherited from Galactus. The group then activate this power, allowing them to legit eat the entire planet. Man, this Iron Man has gone through quite the metamorphosis. From billionaire weapons maker, to terrorist prisoner, to self-made superhero, to undead floating cannibal corpse with cosmic laser powers. We'll definitely make for a great autobiography someday. Can't wait for the audiobook. Tony and the gang would then spend the next 40 years flying through the galaxy, eating everything and everyone in sight. That is, until they reached the official edge of the universe and realized they had picked the entire cosmos nearly clean of life. It was during this time, though, that Tony must have got a hold of a really good mechanic because someone hooked my boy up with some sweet robot legs and some cute little purple boots to match. It's like he's a little Yoshi, except not as adorable. Both will eat you alive, though. Stay away from Yoshi, guys. He's dangerous. The zombies would then debate on what to do next, considering that their food choices were slim. Tony would then remember the machine he had built back when he was human, which as we know was destroyed by Thor, rebuilt by Reed Richards, and then destroyed again by Magneto. Upon remembering this, Iron Man and his cannibal compatriots then plotted a course back to Earth so they could fix the machine once again and get access to the multiverse of munchies. On the way, Tony and the boys sunk their rotted teeth into the slimy skin of none other than Ego the Living Planet. My man Kurt Russell, he's a... Uh, he's seen better days. It was during the Zombie Avengers 40 year bender that Black Panther had survived the initial pandemic and created new Wakanda with the remaining survivors where they worked on slowly repopulating the Earth. Upon discovering this settlement when they made their arrival, the zombie heroes were all ready to help themselves to the survivor Salisbury stakes. Hulk immediately leapt down and began tearing apart the first humans he could get his hands on, only to be stopped by Giant Man, who advised they needed to be smart about things this time around, otherwise they would soon be out of food once again. He proposed taking these remaining humans and turning them into a live breeding program so they would never run out of flesh again. Upon hearing how outrageous and evil this was, the likes of Spider-Man and Luke Cage finally came to their senses, 
albeit 40 years a little too late, and proceeded to rebel against Iron Man and the other zombies. During the Undead Mutiny, new Wakanda chief scientist Reynolds projected a shield around the palace, locking Iron Man and most of the other cannibals out. However, there were a few stragglers locked inside, which included Spider-Man, Hulk, who had now transformed back into Bruce Banner, Luke Cage, and a very hungry zombie gladiator. The now good boy zombie Spider-Man and Cage worked together to defeat Gladiator, along with the mutant Forge, who arrived in one of Tony Stark's old Iron Man suits. Together, the trio worked together to fry Gladiator's head, ending this immediate threat to the Wakandan people. Immediately recognizing his design, Zombie Tony demanded to know where someone like Forge got access to such weaponry. The genius mutant mechanic then informed the brain-eating billionaire that ever since the outbreak, the doors to Stark Industries were left wide open, giving him time to approve upon everything that Tony had ever done. Enraged, Tony flew off with the other Avengers, swearing to kill Forge once they got their hands on the multiverse machine. They soon arrived at Reed Richards' Baxter building, where they did battle with the system security and came across the room where the machine was created. To their surprise, the device was nowhere to be found in the entire facility. Wondering what could have happened to it, Iron Man then put the clues together and realized that after taking his armor, Forge had taken the portal device as well and it was at New Wakanda all along. Furious that he had been swindled like this, Iron Man led the zombies back to Wakanda where they met the resistance at the barrier. An infected but hunger-free Black Panther proposed a deal to Tony and the others that they would lower the shield and give them the multiverse device if they promised to leave him and the survivors alone. The zombies, not about to turn down an offer for a multiversal buffet, agreed and Panther had Reynolds lower the shield. However, this ended up being a double cross by T'Challa, who immediately had the shield brought back up, locking he and the Resistance fighters outside the barrier, where they went to full-on war with the zombie Avengers. But just like last time, Reynolds' aim was not completely perfect with the shield, which resulted in Iron Man getting access to Wakanda and promised to leave the boy some scraps after he finished up tearing into the survivors. Y'all better watch out! Tony Stark is coming for you just like he was coming for those Burger King sandwiches in the first Iron Man movie. Not gonna lie though, every time I see that scene, it makes me want some BK. Looks absolutely delicious there. Zombie Tony then creepily floats around the palace corridors, only to be met by Forge and another band of resistance fighters, all ready to give Mr. Stark the business. As the battles raged on inside and outside New Wakanda, things went from bad to worse as Bruce Banner woke up escaped his restraints, and tried to eat poor Reynolds, causing him to mistakenly lower the shield. The hungry gang then rush inside, all ready to help themselves to that sweet human meat. Upon locating the survivors, the starving zombies prepared to feast, where they noticed a sudden change within their biology. After all this time without food, their bodies had adjusted and the hunger had faded. For the first time in 40 years, the tyrannical Marvel zombies were no longer hungry. However, there was one Avenger late to the I'm Not Hungry party, and that was Zombie Hulk, who burst through the wall, all ready to get his slice of the survivor pie. Iron Man and the others tried to stop the rampaging green zombie, but they sadly proved to be no match for the Hulk and his hangry strength. After brutally killing several of the heroes, Iron Man tried blasting the brute in the face with a cosmic blast, but it only made the dude angrier, who then knocked Tony to the ground and then slammed right through his chest with his giant green foot. This caused the hero's organs to come pouring out of his helmet like Play-Doh, thus marking a quick and violent end for this OG Avenger. You see, not even the comic what-if version of Tony is safe from death. Gotta say though, this one is definitely the most brutal. Having your organs come pouring out of your face is a death that would make even the folks at Mortal Kombat blush. The scientist Reynolds then offered himself to be eaten by the Hulk to stop this reign of terror. He gladly took the nice old man up on his offer and gobbled him up in front of the heroes who watched in horror at the monsters that they had been for so long. Just like his friends, Hulk too noticed his hunger had dissipated and he reverted back to Bruce Banner. Knowing that the only way to prevent this from happening again was to kill Banner, 
The cosmic zombies united their powers and used it to fry the man's head, thus killing the once incredible Hulk. The surviving heroes then had a funeral for Iron Man and their fallen friends, honoring the great men and women that they once were before the virus changed their lives forever. However, this would not quite be the end of Zombie Iron Man's story just yet. Well, for this one it is. This Tony, he's pretty dead. No one's coming back from a Hulk stomp to the chest. I don't care who you are. After the funeral, the zombies would gather at the dimensional portal as they planned to use it to go to different realities and gather supplies to help repair the world that they had destroyed. The mission was co-led by one of the Resistance leaders, Malcolm Cortez, but this all ended up being a double cross by him where he used the portal to transfer the zombies to another dimension so he could rule New Wakanda himself. This caused the heroes to be transported to Earth-Z, which was a dimension very similar to theirs before the infection took over. The multiversal travel altered the zombies' cells, causing them to lose their cosmic powers, but also made their hunger return, causing them to spread the infection to this Earth as well. Giant Man just so happened to be transported to a tower of one of the Watchers, who he of course gobbled up. He discovered that this Watcher had access to technology that allowed him to transport anywhere in the universe. However, he didn't exactly know what he was doing with this alien tech, but was able to transport himself to the basement of this world Stark International. Here he saw a special chip that Tony had created that would allow him to decipher the Watcher's machines. While the original Zombieverse Tony Stark had his act together before the infection took over, his Earth Sea counterpart just happened to be going through a severe bout of depression that he was medicating with copious amounts of alcohol. So he was pretty much Tony from the party scene in Iron Man 2, except there was no party, and he was much more sad. No blasting watermelons with unibeams here, folks. Upon hearing the intruder alert warning, this Tony was too drunk to even go down the stairs to check things out, so our main man, Happy Hogan, decided to be the brave man and went to investigate. Don't do it, Happy! We love you! Happy then made his way to the dark and dingy basement, where he mistakenly walked right into the giant mouth of Hank Pym, who chomped down on the poor dude, infecting him with the zombie virus. Not wanting to get immediately evaporated by this dimension's Iron Man, Giant Man had Zombie Happy lead him to Tony's office and create a distraction so he could sneak in and get the chip. The not-so-happy Happy then shuffled his way through the building where he then began infecting all of the present staff members, much to the horror of Rhodey, who was the building chief of security in this dimension. Rhodes opened fire and killed the Zombie Happy and called for backup while he was relentlessly pursued by the growing horde. Watching this horror unfold on camera, Pepper Potts urged Tony to put on his armor and save the day. However, the drunk and depressed Tony thought he was in no shape to fight and told Pepper that there was nothing he could do. Plus, he got so lost in the sauce that he kind of forgot where he put his armor. Come on, Tony. I'm no therapist or anything, but you need to get your act together, bro. You got zombies coming, and they aren't the fun dancing Michael Jackson kind. Determined to save his friends, Rhodey slid down the elevator shaft and navigated the facility to make his way to Tony's office. He took brief refuge in the men's bathroom, where by sheer luck, he found the suitcase containing Tony's armor. Really, Tony? You're just leaving your super suit laying on the bathroom floor? I'm done with Earth-Z Tony Stark, folks. I just can't. Knowing that this was his only hope, Rhodey donned the iconic armor and began absolutely wrecking the waves of undead with a unibeam. So satisfying. Just something about Iron Man just brutalizing zombies just feels so right. As the cannibals closed in, Pepper demanded for Tony to do something. Giving up all hope, Stark proceeded to casually walk over to a plaque on his wall, which he took down to reveal a safe. <gasps> Could it be? Does the great Tony Stark have a cool secret stash of armor in there and will come to save the day with Rhodey? No. Tony then punched in the secret code, revealing a, you guessed it, more alcohol. This Tony Stark is the absolute worst, folks. As Tony enjoys his last drink, Rhodey bursts into the scene, completely devastating the zombies in his path. He goes to save Pepper from one of the undead and tries to fire a repulsor blast, only for it not to work because Tony forgot to charge the suit last night. 
Someone let me at this guy. He, he's gotta go. Brody then decides to take things old school and just caves in the zombie's head like the true beast that he is. This roadie is going total doomslayer on these guys and I'm totally here for it. He then goes to see if Pepper is alright, but due to Tony's negligence, she was sadly infected and transformed into a zombie herself. In reaction to this, Tony then drunkenly pukes all over zombie Pepper, getting the barf all in her mouth and everything. Bro, what is wrong with this guy? I think... I think I'm gonna be sick. The undead Pepper then runs away, screaming in pain, which is honestly quite bizarre behavior for a zombie. Tony then reveals to Rhodey that this alcohol he drank was not just any alcohol. It was actually a cure for cancer in the form of micro-nanites in a sterile alcohol base. The bots were designed to eat necrotic cells and tissue, which just so happened to be like 99% of a zombie's biology. We then see the nanites put to use firsthand when we see zombie Pepper completely disintegrate right on the spot. Okay, not gonna lie, that was pretty awesome. Throwing up on a zombie and then having them melt is probably one of the coolest things I think I've ever seen. Earth Z Tony Stark gets a redemption point here on this one. Stark then reveals that the only caveat to these bots working is they have to be ingested orally. Knowing that this was the key to saving the day, Rhodey pleaded for Tony to come with him, but Stark told him that he was in no shape mentally or physically for this. He then officially passed down the title of Iron Man to Rhodey, where he was then overcome by the zombies who proceeded to eat the billionaire who gladly accepted this death, telling the horde that his body was pickled with the nanites. Rhodey, wanting to honor his friend and avenge his death, charged the suit and blasted through the facility. He answered a distress call calling for help, officially announcing that Iron Man was here to assist. As the infection spread throughout the world, James would spend the next several years battling the super-powered cannibals. He would continue to upgrade the armor, and any bites he would receive into his flesh would be cut out and replaced with machinery. After repeating this process for so long, the dude was basically a Terminator and was nearly all cyborg, complete with a cool red eye and everything. Cyborg War Machine figure, definitely at the top of my Christmas list. He would then ally himself with Zombie Spider-Man, Wolverine, and Hulk, where they formed the New Avengers to combat the evil zombies of this dimension. During this time, Rhodey and Spider-Man worked together to upgrade Tony's nanites, where they laid in the body of Flint Marco Sandman with them. The team then launched a full-on assault, where they battled the zombie heroes to the death. It was during this fight that Wolverine flung a jar containing Sandman at the zombies, who then flooded the arena with his body, immediately killing the zombies present. This left Rhodey victorious over the undead threat, and would then work to help repair this world as its official Iron Man. And that is the full story of Zombie Iron Man from the Marvel Zombies story. He is honestly one of my favorite characters in the entire series and was so glad to see him make his undead appearance in the episode of What If. While he was not nearly as intelligent as he was in the comic, it was still a great easter egg and I hope we get to see him again sometime soon, whether that be in a comic or film. Now what are your thoughts on this? Did you know this about Zombie Iron Man? Was there something I missed? What other comic characters should we cover? Sound off in the comments. Also be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed today's content, subscribe to the channel, and tap the bell icon to be notified of all of our latest videos. Thank you so much for watching. Remember you are awesome and loved, God bless, and I will see you in the next one.